Hello, everybody. Welcome into another edition of Draft Nuggets here on the Three Tech Pods YouTube channel. Excited to have you here. I know the first ones have done really, really well, both as far as your engagement and your input as well. You've let us know with the Cowboys, the Texans, the Bears, and the Tampa Bay Bucks who you would have taken in those slots and who you'd like to see next. If you haven't seen those videos, scroll on through the videos tab and you will find each of those mock drafts, the Bears in the Box, Trey and I did together. So that's kind of a, a dual action. And uh, if you'd like to see more of those mock drafts where whether it's me and Trey or me and Garrett talking through teams and their strategy and what they should do, please comment down below. Uh, before we get into this Philadelphia Eagles mock draft and I chart a path forward where the Eagles can win next year's Super Bowl, uh, just leave a like on this video if you do enjoy it. It's uh, really, really helpful. We're in hyper growth mode and uh, a lot of things coming up and even something as simple as your like, which you know is free, same as following this YouTube channel. If you're new to the channel, uh, it really, really helps us out. So with all that said, Let's get the Philadelphia Eagles from disappointment and heartbreak to a championship next year. They've got two picks in this first round, 10 and 30. We're doing a four-round mock draft, even though, as you can see here, they only have picks through the first three rounds. But when I tried to do this this past week, and then the site crashed on me, um, I had traded back into the fourth round with one of these picks. So I want to see if the board comes to us and, and allows us to do that. Um, the Eagles, no doubt, disappointing into the Super Bowl, whether you think that was a good call or not on the defensive holding. I happen to think it was because, well, that's what the ref is there to do. Um, it still stings for the Eagles, who were so close to winning another championship. The fact remains that this roster is loaded, and they don't have a ton of holes this year in the draft, especially with two first-round picks, they get to really solidify uh, position groups. And so that's what we're going to do today. I believe this is a Super Bowl-winning roster as soon as next season, depending on how Jalen Hurts uh, performs in this next year. But I want to walk you through a mock draft because this is such a unique draft portfolio that they've got. 10 from New Orleans. They've got 30, which is their original pick. There's only 31 picks in this first round because Miami forfeited theirs, 62 and 94. For me, as we look at the top needs, they've got wide receiver and offensive line, interior offensive line. I disagree with this a little bit. I, I do think that any team could use another wide receiver, but I think that cornerback is the top need for the Philadelphia Eagles. James Bradbury is likely walking out the door in free agency. I don't think the Eagles are going to be able to afford a really nice contract for him. And so you are looking for another stud cornerback. And for me, that might just be available here at number 10 or if we trade back somewhere else in the first round. So let's go ahead and get this underway. Uh, Will Anderson Jr. goes, Bryce Young, sure. Jalen Carter uh, to the Cardinals. You saw the one of the top corners on my board go in the top five, which seems a little high, but Devin Witherspoon is a good-looking cornerback out of Illinois. Very, very aggressive. He's going to get in trouble with some pass interference penalties early on in his career just because he's a little a little handsy, uh, just plays very, very aggressive at the line of scrimmage and, and tries to bump you off your route um, from the very get-go. But I, I really like Witherspoon. I think he's going to be a long starter in the NFL. Now, at number 10, you see Tyree Wilson goes, Anthony Richards goes. We've got four quarterbacks off in the top 10. Tell you what, if you're the Eagles, you are flipping double back handsprings if you've got four quarterbacks going because that means that a guy like Christian Gonzalez is here on the board. Now, I'm higher on Joey Porter Jr. than PFF is. I think Joey Porter is a Philadelphia guy through and through, played at Penn State. He's aggressive. He's nasty. He's got good ball skills, and he wants to go take take that ball away from you and then dance on your grave as he's going the other way. He fits Philly to a T. Um, I do have Christian Gonzalez, though, as my top-rated cornerback on the board. I don't know yeah, if PFF's going to... They've still got his Colorado rankings. That's, uh, that's, that's tough. He definitely played at Oregon in 2022. Um, yeah, so this isn't going to be super, super helpful, but 
Christian Gonzalez is a great looking cornerback. Um, he's he's tall, he's lanky, he's a guy that has really good ball skills early on. I'd like to see how they continue to develop, but at least in college, um, very, very good at high pointing the ball, taking it away from wide receiver. He's 6'2", 200, so amazing size for Christian Gonzalez. And, you know, in my mock draft that I'm currently putting together, I have him going in the top 10. Not going to say where, but I do have him going in the top 10. The ball skills, I think, are tremendous. So for me, let's go ahead and take the top cornerback. Again, top need, top cornerback on my board. Let's draft Christian Gonzalez. But the beautiful thing is we are not done here. Kalaja Yancey goes 12. Wow, that is really, really high. PFF is super high on him. I think he's an uh, early day two guy, but to go in the top 15, that's kind of crazy. Uh, now, at 30, we could trade up. And I mentioned in the mock draft that I tried to do, I, trade, I actually traded down with 10, um, but Christian Gonzalez wasn't there. So love that we have him. I'm now almost curious to see how high we could trade up because if we want to come in and get 30, yeah, that's, or 13, excuse me, that's going to be too high. But now we're looking at interior offensive line, and there are still some really good guys on this board. Peter Skaronsky has gone probably the top interior guy. I think he's going to flourish at guard out of Northwestern. His technique is amazing. His skill and arm length, uh, not quite what I like out of my tackles. So I think if the Titans take him, I think they're taking him to go to guard. Jets take Lucas Van Ness, Brian Branch. There goes Paris Johnson Jr., who's my top tackle on the board. Uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba goes to the Bucks, who need a quarterback. I don't know who he's going to have thrown to him. Um, you have the Clemson guys go back to back. There's Jordan Addison off the board. Paris Johnson Jr., top tackle. I love him. I've talked about him in, in previous mock drafts. Um, I would love for one of my mocks to be able to take him. It's not this one, though. But Seattle's on the board now. Seattle went cornerback with their first pick. They need interior offensive line. They also need defensive line, which in a lot of mocks, you have them taking Jalen Carter. Um, he obviously wasn't a board. Brian Brissy, who I know they would want to be available at pick 20, is off the board. So Seattle is most definitely going offensive line here. Um, let's see here. If we do 30 and 62, that gets it done. That's a lot of value, though. If we do 94 and next year's... Da, 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 da. If we could do 94 and this year's three... Or next year's three. That would be... That would be interesting, but that's still a lot of draft capital to give up. I think... I think at 30, or if we move up, a guy like Osiris Torrance would be incredible to get. And they don't even, what on earth? They don't even go interior either line. That's that's crazy. Um, that would be a misstep from the normally draft savvy Seattle Seahawks. Broderick Dr Jones, who's another great tackle, goes to the Chargers. Uh, let's slow this down by one just so we don't blow by it. Ravens go Joey Porter Jr., Deontay Banks. They need guard. They go edge. They go edge. No way. Uh, I don't understand that pick either. But now this has opened the door. If we do, can we somehow get away with this? Wow. Uh, I know that the Giants probably wouldn't normally trade, but... I'm betting the Giants are hunting wide receiver and they don't feel like they've got that wide receiver on the board. Now, according to this board, I'm probably going to reach here and I don't care because Osiris Torrance, to me, if you look at what he did at the Senior Bowl, just a brute of a human being, is very, very good with his feet, is very, very good with his hips. I think that Osiris Torrance, when we look back at this draft two, three, four, five years down the line, could end up being the top guard. So for me to be able to get up here and get him in the first round, you get that fifth-year option with him. I'm absolutely loving that. Osiris Torrance is the pick. Cowboys on the board. They go offensive line. Anton Harrison, who I'm not sold on, out of Oklahoma. Bijan, Michael Mayer. Uh, 
let's pause this because now we've got to wait till 62. We'll monitor it. I don't know that I want to trade up again. Nolan Smith sneaks into the first round. All right, let's bump it up one more. Tyreek Stevenson goes. Good corner out of Miami. If you listen to our most recent podcast uh, with Luke Winstell of Clemson Sports and ESPN Plus, he said that Tyreek Stevenson in some mocks is even going in the first round, which he sent that to me after after we, we got off the air, and I was just absolutely blown away. Now, here, uh, we're faced with a couple of different options. Interior offensive line, John Michael Schmitz, maybe the best center in the class. That would be a huge win at 62. I've got John Michael Schmitz as a top 50 prospect as well, easily. And for him to slide all the way down, I mean, this is larceny to take him here. Let's look at the wide receivers because we do, we would like one. Um, Jalen Hyatt, Hyatt would be a lot of fun. But honestly, I'm thinking with the value that we have down the board, Rasheed Rice, Parker Washington's a good slot guy, Jaden Reed, is going to need more development, but boy, he blew folks away at the Senior Bowl. And then A.T. Perry. Oh, and Tyler Scott's down here too. Tyler Scott's a big riser. Yep. No no doubt in my mind. Um, John Michael Schmitz is probably who I want to take. Linebacker's not a big issue. Safety edge. Yeah, we're taking John Michael Schmitz. Um, anchor of a fantastic offensive line in Minnesota for five years. Captain, big leadership guy, and immediately can come in and make a huge impact. Now we're looking at wide receivers. We're watching the board. There goes Jalen Hyatt. There goes Parker Washington, Rasheed Rice. Now let's throw the pause button on this because we had some receivers go, go quickly. Rasheed Rice to the Panthers who traded with Carolina. Parker Washington goes uh, on the board. We still have uh, Jaden Reed. We still have Tyler Scott. So let's slow this down just a hair. Wayne McBride, Michael Wilson goes. Interesting. Ah, oh, there goes Jaden Reed. I wanted him. I wanted him here at 94. Good pick by the Bucs. Um, again, this is our last pick in the mock. I don't think it would be reaching here, to be quite honest, to take Tyler Scott inside the top 100. I know there are some of you who watch my previous mocks who love Tyler Scott um, on the Cowboys mock draft. We got a comment about him. So, to take him inside the the top ninety five, not a reach here for Tyler Scott. Uh, he is a he's going to be a really really nice wide receiver. 5'11", 185, can play the slot, can play outside. Um, again, I can't believe they don't have more information on some of these guys, but I really really like the pick here. So let's take Tyler Scott, and I think that is a tremendous draft first first four rounds um, for the Philadelphia Eagles if, if they could get away with. Two awesome pieces, day one starters on the offensive line, plus a ridiculous corner prospect inside the top 10. I think that is a winning, winning draft. Again, they're going to knock me because they said I reached there. Um, I guess they don't like that trade. I, you know, to give up a future fourth to come up and get uh, Osiris Torrance, who's going to be a guard for the next, you know, eight to 10 years in the league. I, I'll give up that fourth round pick. And then Tyler Scott. Really, really fast, good ball skills. I think he fits that Philadelphia mold. There you go, folks. B minus overall grade. You know, B, A, whatever it is. Uh, I'm really, really happy with this Eagles mock draft. Let me know who you want to see us do next. Let me know what you think of this mock draft. Would you have gone with somebody else at number 10? Would you have picked different offensive linemen or picked a different position altogether? Let me know in the comments. Like, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next video. Gracious, yeah. how about that?